Welcome to the HT Story audio channel. Please subscribe and share the video to make my channel more popular. Thank you very much. You guys continue to listen to the next chapter of the series Reborn to Revenge. Chapter 21. Shut up if you don't want to die. Jocelyn was in a panic, and her mind was like a muddle. She tried to push Nicola away unconsciously. But as soon as she tried to push him away hard, a dizzy sensation hit her. Her abdomen seemed to be burned by fire. Her act of pushing and shoving involuntarily slowed down, and her fist hit Nicola's chest tremblingly. She shuddered, and knew she had been drugged. Jocelyn knew that Monica would not suffer without striking back, and she would avenge herself on Jocelyn in the wedding reception. But Jocelyn did not expect that Monica was so vicious. She could plan out this kind of thing to revenge on Jocelyn. This was to shame Morrison family. Jocelyn would lose her reputation, and could never lift her head in Morrison family. Sister-in-law is too impatient to wait, and you are getting wet. Nicola said and gasped near her ears. Before she could think about it, a large hand had reached under her skirt, along her smooth skin, into her inner thigh, fondling her skillfully. Don't. Jocelyn cried out in surprise, stopping Nicola's hand, almost as hard as she could. What's the matter? Nicola raised the corners of his mouth, and fondled her under her skirt with his fingers. Jocelyn gasped because Nicola tickled her, and she also had to put up with his foul language. I make efforts to flirt with you, and you are comfortable. Don't pretend innocent after taking advantage. Looking at you now, in addition to me, who can you find to help you to release your sexual desire? My brother. I'm afraid that he won't satisfy you. Nicola was a veteran lover, and he could tell that whether Jocelyn was voluntary or drugged by a glance. Wait a minute. Jocelyn tried to squeeze a word out of her teeth. If you can find that I was drugged, then you ought to think of someone who drugged me and why he did it. If we get bumped into by someone, we'll both be ruined. Hearing her words, Nicola looked shocked. Jocelyn pushed him away passingly and pointed out. You go over the balcony to the next door, and I'll meet you later. The balcony. Nicola's face changed, are you crazy? It's the 42nd floor. You're trying to kill me. With the distance less than half a meter, you just step over it. No, I won't. Nicola was dragged to the balcony by Jocelyn, but he kept screaming timidly. Jocelyn finally urged him to climb up the balcony. However, he refused to jump to the next balcony. Dong dong dong, a burst of rapid knock on the door, it sounded like the dying bell in the house and there came a strange female voice outside the house. This is the room where I just saw Jocelyn coming in with a man. There was a lot of noise outside. Jocelyn's face turned blue, and under the emergency, she lifted her skirt, raised her leg, and kicked Nicola over. Ouch. Nicola fell and got bruises. He complained incessantly. Jocelyn said in a cold voice, shut up if you don't want to die. She quickly turned around, closed the door, drew the curtains, and lay down on the bed, all in one fell swoop. Hardly had she covered the quilt when the door was knocked open. Jocelyn closed her eyes, but from the room noise, she could draw the outline of a group of people around the people from Morrison family swarming in. Even without thinking about it, she knew it's boisterous. Where is the man? Selena's voice was shrill, trembling and angry. All around the room there was the sound of opening and closing cupboard doors, and it was noisy all of a sudden. 
Jocelyn opened her eyes with difficulty and looked at the huge crowd of people in front of her. She spoke incoherently with a look of shock on her face. You. Why are you all here? What's wrong? Chapter 22. I beg you, please help me. Stan and Monica stood in the front, and Arthur sat in the center of Morris and family who were surrounded by waiters and guests. The sweet room was so crowded and those people looked at Jocelyn as if they were looking at a monkey at a zoo. What are you doing? Selena restrained her anger, someone told me that you had sex with a man. I will chase you away from our family today rather than keeping my dignity. What? Jocelyn was scared to be pale. Who said this to slander our family? This is defamation. I saw that you and a man come here. It can't be wrong. Otherwise, why did you come to the suite when everyone was in the banquet hall? Standing beside Monica, the bridesmaid spoke with a confident look. There was an uproar among the audience. You, a shameless woman, quickly get down the bed. Selena was angry to tremble. She couldn't wait to kill the daughter-in-law there who made the family disgraceful. Jocelyn bit her teeth with tearful eyes. Mum, you said I was shameless after hearing something from others. I'm asking you this, people always catch a thief stealing, catch a mistress with a man, but where is the man whom I have sex with? I can't make love alone. When she finished words, several people brought by Monica just checked the room. They stood in the corner with awkward look and shook their heads. The guests were all confused and looked at each other. Selena also stunned, frowning towards Monica with questioning eyes. What's going on here? Monica panicked and was angry secretly due to the stare. She bit her teeth, Snow saw it with her own eyes, it can't be wrong. That man either hid it or ran away but also stunned, frowning towards Monica with questioning eyes. What's going on here? Monica panicked and was angry secretly due to the stare. She bit her teeth, Snow saw it with her own eyes, it can't be wrong. That man either hid it or ran away before we came. Mrs. Judd. Jocelyn directly interrupted her words, said straightforwardly. You can't just set me up because I challenged your dignity on the painting. I am wondering why I suddenly got dizzy when I drank a glass of wine and why your bridesmaid helped me to the bed. It turns out to be your scheme. Jocelyn explained all these clearly in a few words and Selena was clever to understand it. So did the guests. Mrs. Judd is so narrow-minded. It is far more than that. She almost killed people for slandering an affair. If the plan was perfect, Morris and family would be a great joke. I don't think Judd family want to be on friendly terms with Morris and family. Preciously it was painting issue now it is this. In the discussion, Selena turned purple with anger and looked at Stan, Mr. Judd, you'd better give me a good explanation for this. Aunt, there must be some misunderstandings. Misunderstandings? Selena raised her voice and wished everyone on the floor could hear it. My eldest daughter-in-law has always been decent. It is impossible for her to have an affair. Your wife tried to set her up to humiliate our family. Morris and family have been treating you well. The atmosphere changed so quickly. In her rebuke, the audience discussed Mr. and Mrs. Judd with disdain. In this noise, Jocelyn did not say a word, biting her teeth to endure the discomfort of the body. She only needed to point it out a little then Morris and family were clever to decide what was more important. 
It wasn't mentioned that there was no evidence to prove her affair. Even if Selena really doubted, she would have to cover something for her family. Monica's plan was so stinky. However, could those people went out for discussion? Jocelyn hardly could stand it anymore. In this noise, Arthur sat in the wheelchair and looked at it coldly as if he had nothing to do with it. It was not himself who was almost cheated by his wife. He looked Jocelyn up and down and sensed something from her blush. He frowned a little. Stone's father heard the news and rushed to mediate. People scattered, leaving Arthur alone. It's too noisy outside. Hearing such simple words, the servant went away and knowingly closed the door. The room was suddenly quiet. Jocelyn tightened the sheet and all her nerves were tightened. She had endured it for such a long time. Her body under the quilt was totally wet. At this moment, she couldn't speak a word to deal with Arthur. However, Arthur asked slowly as if he tortured her on purpose. Where is the man, where is he? He early noticed that somebody set Jocelyn up, but that man definitely existed because it was a whole trap. Jocelyn got nervous. She used to have hundreds of excuses, but now she couldn't think of any idea. After a while, a sentence came out her mouth. I do not know what you're talking about. Do you? Arthur's eyes fell on her tight sheet and gradually pushed the wheelchair closer. Don't come over. Jocelyn bit her teeth as her chest went up and down. As wheels rotated, every slight sound was exceptionally clear in this room and the chair automatically stopped when its edge hit the bed. One long hand grabbed the corner of the sheet. How dare you! Before the words was finished, there was sweet warm air when the single sheet was picked up. There was sudden darkness and a bang sound before Arthur. Then his whole body was overturned by the huge impulse. The shoulders slammed into the carpet and caused pain. The arms were all numb, and before he could notice, he had already fallen on the ground and could not move. As soon as he looked up, he saw Jocelyn sitting on his waist, showing out her shoulder as her and shoulder strap slipped off. Her eyes were enticing, and her face was red and bright. It's so hot. Please, help me. Before he could speak a word, his lips were blocked by a touch of sweetness. His pupil suddenly shrank and he did not have the strength to push her away, allowing Jocelyn to bite and kiss his body, to take off his clothes crazily, to tough him up and down. Oh! He stared his eyes and couldn't believe it. Jocelyn almost tore his shirt and her hands tucked along his chest. Her hot cheeks against his body, alleviating the burning sensation of her body. Pop, the metal buckle swayed in the air and Holmes's belt was quickly untied. Arthur's face turned already black with consecutive low growls. Jocelyn! Jocelyn! Stop! Just once, I beg you, please help me. Chapter 23 Do you think that I'm goat? Jocelyn's reason had been gone, the clothes were not tidy, the hair was messy, she was sitting on him and constantly gasping, she can't wait to pull up her skirt, the other hand was holding Arthur's underwear, and her hot hands touched something. Arthur was lying on the ground and couldn't move. The eyes that had never been flustered were covered with blood, and he lost his voice. This was ridiculous, too ridiculous. Jocelyn was almost crazy to tear Arthur's underwear. Arthur tried to resist, but when he fell, his arm was numb, and he had no strength at all. All the shocks in his life in his brain were used he fell, his arm was numb, and he had no strength at all. 
All the shocks in his life in his brain were used here. This woman, was she really crazy? He gradually gave up his rebellion, he panted and lie on the ground. Jocelyn's eyes were quickly filled with blood because of the drug, and the eyes were blurred. She only used her sense of touch to groping around. When she suddenly got no response, she stunned and raised her head. This made her watch clearly Arthur's gloomy and shameful face. The cold eyes made her suddenly calm down, and she recovered a few senses. At the same time, she suddenly remembered one thing, and let go of her hand. This thing, you can't do it, right? In Jocelyn's impression, after the marriage, Arthur did not touch her ever. The past life, she used this body to please him. And she took off in front of his face and he always despised her. He didn't look at her at all. From this point of view, Arthur was a complete good for nothing of having him sexy. She was humiliating him. She coughed awkwardly. Sorry, sorry, I don't mean that. After that, she did not wait for Arthur to react. She stood up on the bed and did not dare to look at Arthur's face again, and held herself and walked into the bathroom. The distressed sigh in the bathroom made Arthur to show a bitter smile. Not long after, there was a sound of flowing water in the bathroom, and the faint night moon was accompanied by the snoring of the woman, which was particularly clear in the quiet bedroom. Arthur was lying on the ground like he was dead, and he had been already uneasy. Listening to such a voice, his lower abdomen suddenly tightened. His face changed, holding the last strength to grab the sheets and cover himself. Cover the lower body of the awkward situation. Jocelyn stayed in the bathroom for half an hour. When she came out, her face was flushed. The dress that had been torn had already been replaced, she was wearing a hotel bathrobe. She saw that Arthur was still lying on the ground, and she was so embarrassed. Sorry, sorry, I just really... Arthur's eyebrows were like frost, he was biting his teeth. Don't say sorry to me, I think what you have to do now is to get me up. Jocelyn immediately reacted, and hurried forward, and helped him stand up in a hurry. When she pulled the sheets under him, she was stopped by him. Don't touch me. Jocelyn's look was awkward, and she saw the vigilance of his face, she was angry, and let her hands go. She said, I just did that because I was drugged. I'm not good. What's more, even if I do want it, but can you? Heard her plausible words, Arthur was so angry and speechless. Night fell. After returning from the Judd family's wedding banquet, Morris and family members all treat Jocelyn very well, especially the grandfather. From Jocelyn stopped the unidentified paintings to later he heard the wedding banquet follow-up, and during the dinner time, she was praised by the grandfather. A person of high position is liable to be attacked. If you want to stand firm, you have to be vigilant at all times, and don't get caught. The grandfather concluded at the dinner table what happened in the afternoon, and his look was very serious. I looked at how Stan has grown up, but when he is an adult, he has his own thought. You all pay attention to it. In the end, outsiders and Morrison family members are not a group. Today's things are taken as a warning. Jocelyn did a good job. Stand straight and never mind if the shadow inclines, I just did a normal response, nothing at all. Jocelyn was very modest, and at the same time she also glanced at Arthur. You should usually pay more attention to it. What can't you say that you can't get the backbite, right? Upon hearing this, 
Julia Morrison showed the supercilious look immediately and became disdainful, but she did not dare to say anything in front of her grandfather. Selena was nodding. Yes, you really did a good job, but otherwise our face will be lost today. The wife of Stan will later let the bridesmaid take the blame for her. She really thought that others are blind? Because of you, I didn't stirring up that matter. I would talk to his father and do less business with him. When mentioned his son, there was a disappointment in the eyebrows of the grandpa, and he snorted. Doing the business, it is the thing that the wicked person does. That is his own choice if he was cheated by someone who is going to do business with him. No one needs to remind him. The atmosphere suddenly turned down sharply. In combination with the memories of past lives, Jocelyn secretly analyzed the situation of the Morrison family. The three generations of the Morrison family were the founding fathers of a country. In the entire family of Morrison, there were nine of ten all served for the political army, but to Arthur's father, who was the only son of his generation, but he was with Auntie Bone and sincerely engaged in business. Almost broke with the grandfather, until Arthur entered the army, and the relationship between the two was moderated. Now Arthur's father's business was doing very well. It seemed that the grandfather was dissatisfied. In fact, he had actually helped him a lot. Jocelyn was thinking about it that if she wanted to fight against Stan to recapture the Leonard group, she still has to be someone in the Morios group. But how to prevent the grandfather from being disgusted and let Arthur's father trust was a problem. After the meal, Jocelyn avoided everyone to go for a walk in the garden. In fact, she wanted to make a plan by herself and she needed to be quiet. In fact, she wanted to make a plan by herself and she needed to be quiet. Just sitting in the pavilion, a black shadow covered the instep. She looked up, her heart suddenly tightened. You were in the humor, can you enjoy the moon here on your own? She was about to get up, but she was pressed by Nicola. Jocelyn's face changed, and she looked up at the pair of ambiguous eyes. In front of her, there was a similar outline for the eyes to Arthur, but it was a completely different style. Nicola looked at her from a high position with a look of ambiguity. You kicked me in the afternoon and I still have a backache, but I still think about you. Waiting for you in the room for the whole afternoon, I haven't eaten yet. You are so safe and back here, how do you feel, is my brother stronger than me in this respect? Help you solve it. Jocelyn glanced at Nicola's hand on her shoulder and couldn't move him at all. Her eyes were cold. Nicola. There are so many women outside, how do you just entangle me? Of course I like you, maybe you have forgotten. It's me who was dating you. I was also the one who led you through the door. The eyes that you looked at me were so soft and sweet like water, and you liked me very much. When she got married, she didn't know how Jocelyn's stepmother cooperated with Morrison family. She used Nicola as a mask and deceived Jocelyn who thought she married a normal person. It was the beginning, now it is now, Jocelyn looked calm and said slowly. I was deceived at the beginning, but you know that I am your sister-in-law from beginning to end. I am more curious about whether you want me or what you want is actually your brother, Arthur's wife. In a sentence, the point broke the interests. Nicola had had a crack in his cynical look, and his eyes on Jocelyn had also sank. Chapter 24. Are you satisfied with my strength? Don't look at me like that. We are now on the balcony of the 42th story. If you really have fear of heights, you can't stand here. 
Jocelyn raised her eyebrows slightly and stared at the man in front of her in her sharp eyes. Morris and family seemed to be superficially harmonious. In fact, in private, there were many contradictions among the family members and the relationships and things were very complicated. And Nicola was by no means so weak and useless as he was on the surface. In a short time, there was a sneer in the pavilion. Nicola took back the hand that was put on Jocelyn and sat down casually. Why didn't I find you were so smart before? It seems that after you was in prison, you have changed too much. Having nearly went through the death, if I don't become smarter, would I come back and wait to be used as a gun? Jocelyn answered him directly and frankly and she looked very firm, so that Nicola couldn't find anything wrong with her. He frowned and was about to ask something more when the bell for a text message rang. Jocelyn looked down at her cell phone, and then looked up with her complicated eyes. I'm sorry, brother-in-law. I have something to deal with. I won't chat with you here. I need to go first. Seeing her present graceful manner when getting along with others, Nicola was more confused. In the past, he could grab her and force her to answer his questions at will, but now he found it difficult to do that, judging from the several conversations recently. Looking at the content of the text message, Jocelyn turned on her computer and searched for news in real time, as soon as she returned to her bedroom. After clicking the return key, with a fuck sound, a large number of red letter headlines of today's focus news appeared on the screen. After looking for his wife in the news, the young president of the Jad group married to his wife's confidant, and his soulful image has collapsed. Video exposure of the wedding scene of young President Stan who have been regarded as a soulful man and never gave up looking for his wife. Randomly opening a web page, Jocelyn found that the comments from the netizens were even more exciting. The man has betrayed his wife but still wanted to show his faithfulness. This man was so disgusting that I won't buy any products related to the Jad group in the future. His fiancée have just died for such a short time. But he married his fiancée's close friend. I've never seen such a shameless person. I have heard that the woman is pregnant. Just looking at her face, I can be sure that she was a mistress. I was eating while I watched the news. And I really threw up. Jocelyn coldly looked at these comments which humiliated Stan. She glanced at her mobile phone from the corner of her eyes, and her eyes still remained on the text message interface. The news has been sent out and the response has blown up. We will cooperate in the future. If you want to make a fortune safely, instead of incurring mischief, don't contact me voluntarily. It's good for you. After sending this text message, Jocelyn emptied the chat content and looked up at the wedding scene of the two people showed on the computer screen. She couldn't help showing a trace of disgust. This was just a little lesson for them. When she found out all the truth, she would make Stan and Monica lose all standing and reputation, and even make the whole Jad family never exist in Yanjing. At midnight. The servant ran a bath and withdrew considerately. Jocelyn sat on a small bench beside the bathtub, scrubbing Arthur's back hard, with the sleeves of her bathrobe pulled up. She was in a good mood, even humming in a low voice. Arthur was closing her eyes. Hearing that her voice was getting happier and happier, he couldn't help frowning song. Then I'll change another one. After a second of meditation, she said to herself, You're a soldier. You certainly don't like this pop song. How about singing a red song for you? Without waiting for Arthur to respond, she began to hum again. 
My motherland and I, cannot be separated for a moment. Arthur looked more angry, and he gritted his teeth. Jocelyn, can't you understand my words? I ask you to be quiet. Not pleasant. Jocelyn looked at him with her head tilted. Arthur turned his head and almost stared at her with his murderous eyes, then he gritted his teeth. I. Don't. Want to. Listen. Jocelyn was shocked, murmuring, if you don't want to listen, you can choose not to listen. After that, she stopped talking. Arthur. Eyes was so sharp that Jocelyn felt that once he glanced at her, her life would be reduced by ten years. Fortunately, she was in a good mood today. Since he didn't allow her to sing, she would scrub his back harder. Are you satisfied with my strength? Arthur looked extremely angry. If you say one more nonsense, go back to your room and sleep alone. Hearing the words, Jocelyn immediately shut up and glared at the back side of Arthur's head reluctantly. Were you so powerful that you could deprive me of the speaking freedom? The bathroom was quiet all of a sudden, and Jocelyn had no choice but you to wash his back and help him to go to bed. Arthur had the habit of reading before he went to bed. Jocelyn was lying beside him and had closed her eyes. She looked very relaxed, which was not as grim as she was yesterday. It seemed that she was really in a good mood, considering her excited look in the bathroom just now. Why? Arthur thought of the news that his close adjutant had just told him. Because Stan's wedding was exposed by the media, and everyone was lambasting him. He looked thoughtful and asked. Are you in a good mood today? Jocelyn had not yet fallen asleep. She opened her eyes when hearing his words. Then she just found that Arthur was looking at her with a faint and expressionless look. All right. Because of Stan. Jocelyn was shocked and she looked nervous. She didn't expect that Arthur was so cautious and sensible that he could find out the reason for all her emotional changes. Stan. She pretended to be puzzled. What do you mean? Arthur looked more grim and he stared at her with his forceful eyes. Today, Stan's wedding was exposed by reporters. Ah. Jocelyn looked stiff. After a few seconds, she stared at him. Should the response on the internet blow up? Looking at the whole process of the changes on her face from confusion to reverence, Arthur carefully confirmed it and pretended to be indifferent. The news of the wedding has been strictly blocked. It's a bit strange to be exposed. Journalists don't have such great abilities. Jocelyn pinned her palms in the quilt and sweated slightly. What do you think of it? Arthur suddenly asked her. The pain from the palms forced her to regain her consciousness. She had done thing neatly. Those journalists would not dare to risk offending Judd family and Morrison family to tell the truth. Considering that, she really calmed down. What can I say? She yawned and looked indifferent. Fire cannot be wrapped up in paper. There are so many guests on the scene. No one knows that who will tell the reporter about the wedding. He offended Grandpa at that time. I don't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Let's conduct ourselves well. After that, she yawned again and turned her back to sleep. Seeing that she was sleepy and not interested in this thing, Arthur gave up suspecting her and read his book again. But, he thought of another thing after dinner. Since you know how to protect yourself wisely, you should stay away from Nicola. Jocelyn was a little stunned, but did not turn around. 
The relationship between Arthur and her was not so close. The reason why he said this was definitely not that he was jealous. But he said that was seemingly not to take his respect into account. She vaguely felt that Arthur was so shrewd that he must know the bad things done by Nicola. What he said just now aimed at reminding her of be careful of Nicola. Chapter 25. What a glib mouth. Morris and family looked like fathers and sons got along well on the surface. But there was something deep. Arthur's father was on bad terms with his grandpa thus he didn't stay in the house throughout the year while his wife always stayed at home. Arthur was young and competent, but he was disabled now. Even so, Selina put the hope of carrying on the family line on him rather than her youngest son who was healthy and lively. It seemed that Nicola respected his parents and brother and was timid as well as incompetent. But he secretly tried to sleep with his brother's wife for several times. If he was really timid, he wouldn't dare to have such idea. It was complicated inside the family. Jocelyn carried memories of two people. She thought of so many complicated things that she fell asleep. Because of that wedding issue, the Leonard Group taken over by Stan was affected by public opinions and its stock market was turbulent. Seeing parents' hard work was wasted by Stan, Jocelyn felt terrible but she had to bite her teeth to make it worse. As long as Stan ruined the Leonard she had to bite her teeth to make it worse. As long as Stan ruined the Leonard Group, she could take it back to start again. This was exactly what didn't kill it made it stronger. In the afternoon, Arthur was pushed out by the servant for a walk while Jocelyn surfed the internet in the room. There were private messages from Facebook. Hi, this is Susan, secretary to the chairman from Lemon Holding Group. Are you the designer of the jewelry? The attached picture was a bracelet designed by Joanne when she studied jewelry design at abroad. At that time, she often designed some samples to share with online friends but it had been many years. While she was thinking, there was another message from the dialog box. Our chairman is so interested in your design, and our company plans to build up a jewelry brand aiming at young groups. We are recruiting designers, are you interested? Jocelyn's eyes started to light up. It was her early dream to build up a jewelry brand. If it is convenient, can you tell us your real name? We can make an appointment to talk about it. Our chairman really likes your design. There was consecutive words from that secretary. It could be seen that they were thirsty for talents. Holding her chin, Jocelyn stared at the screen for a while and typed a sentence. There will be no problem if your future independent brand can be operated by myself. Quote. Quote dot 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 quote. There were more dishes at dinner than usual. While Jocelyn was wondering if there were guests, the door rang. Hearing the sound, Mr. from servants, she knew it was Abner Morrison. It had been half months since he traveled to France for business. He even didn't catch the wedding of Judd family. It was the first time that Jocelyn met him since she went out of jail. Abner, how is the business in France? Selina actively picked dishes for Abner while kept glancing at the expressions of their father. She totally didn't notice that her husband looked bad since he came back. Just so-so. The atmosphere froze after those words. Hum, the old man noticed that Abner must had met some trouble, he said coldly. I have reminded you early that it is not easy to do business. People respect you because our family in Yanjing, but who knows you when you go out of Yanjing? 
Abna had a bad temper. After hearing this, he refuted. It's common to win or lose a battle, so is business. I haven't seen any general who leads soldiers always win. The old man frowned. Either soldiers winning or losing is upright and to protect the country. Business is another thing. Seeing that Abner was about to refute, Selena stopped him by pulling, This dish is good. Father, please have a try. Abner, tasted. Both the father and son were speechless, looking all bad. The atmosphere in the house froze. Lowering her head, Jocelyn sighed silently. What a glib mouth Selena had. As soon as she spoke, her husband and father quarreled. She really hit a nerve. All her three kids seemed to get used to it. They didn't speak a word and just ate, pretending to see nothing. She was so convinced. After dinner, the old man went back to his study and those three kids scattered. Abner seemed to be so angry that he wouldn't stay at home, arguing with Selena in the corridor. Taking the opportunity to make tea downstairs, Jocelyn hid aside to hear the dialogues. Master your temper to talk with father. He will help because you are the only son. In his opinion, it is just usual chatting with others. Quote. You needn't do that. I didn't accept his help when I came back. Besides, as you saw, he didn't seem to help me. Abna. Selena caught up him, please listen to me, Mrs. Ruskin isn't that easy going. It will be easier for you to ask help from father. Quote. Hearing the name of Mrs. Ruskin, Jocelyn was surprised and pricked up her ears. It is none of your business, remember you need to bid something tomorrow afternoon at the charity auction held by Leonard Financial Group. Then give it to Mrs. Ruskin as a gift and take the opportunity to speak more. Hearing this, Jocelyn clenched her hands and slowly turned around to hide against the wall. Mixed feelings welled up in her heart. She recalled the scene when Stan humbly stood before her parents and asked for a job in Leonard Financial Group. When Stan did not inherit his family business but wanted to enter the Leonard Financial Group. He gave a great speech without any flaw. He said that he didn't want to rely on his father. He wanted to make success on his own. At that time, Joanne focused on the jewelry design and told her parents that she didn't want to manage the company. Therefore they trusted him and allowed him to work in Leonard Group. Within one year, Stan became the vice president of the group. Now that her parents passed away in the accident, the entire group's power naturally fell into his hands. Without too much thinking, she also knew that the charity auction was a means of crisis public relations made by Stan. On one hand, he wanted to take out their money by the charity auction for his money laundering. On the other hand, he gathered celebrities as well as politicians by the reputation of the family to do business. Indeed, he killed two birds with one stone. But Abner just mentioned Mrs. Ruskin. Jocelyn turned her eyes, is Ruskin. Jocelyn turned her eyes. If Abner needed the help, 